Yo, what is going on, Comfy Gang? It's Comfy Knee here. So, if you guys are wondering um, what the intro of the channel was about, it was basically just to show how um, fucked I am. Just kidding. Well, kind of half joking, kind of not. But I recently fell down the VTuber rabbit hole, which is an extension of the anime rabbit hole, in my opinion. And I don't know, it's just me, but I feel like uh i'm just progress progressively getting more and more away of, from what society expects of a normal person and you know some might consider this a new low if it is a low then it perhaps is a low which i never thought was possible for me to reach but yet here i am so in light of this uh since some of you guys have asked me to talk about anime uh, i thought today would be a good a good idea to talk about um I guess how I fell down the anime rabbit hole and this will basically be um, discussing what happened during the five month period um, where I basically disappeared off the face of the internet, off discord, off YouTube and I'm going to be essentially talking about, uh, you know, and not in too specific detail but just talk about the kinds of things I was watching and perhaps what effects it had on my mind. And if you're wondering why there's voices in the background, um, I just thought it was a funny coincidence that the person uh, or the VTuber that I included in my intro um, was streaming. So I decided to put her stream in the background as sort of ambient background noise, as a sort of, I don't know, ironic, whatever maneuver. But anyways, I don't, don't I'm knowing what I'm saying. I'm pretty deprived of sleep, but um, yeah, I'm gonna start the video. So, um, I guess a little bit of background of my anime history prior to this five month period. It's not like it's not like this five month period was the first time that I watched anime in my life. I was watching anime before, and in fact, I was actually a massive shonen tard, where I basically binged all of the major shonen anime out there, all of the quote unquote big three of shonen: um, One Piece, Naruto, and um, Bleach. I finished all three. I also finished Dragon Ball Z. Um, not Dragon Ball Z. Um, some other, I think GT, I think. And, um, you know, a lot of the major ones. Um, Attack on Titan, I was watching at the time. And Full Metal Alchemist, for sure. But um, basically, uh, I went on a really long hiatus because, fuck, the glare of the light's so fucking bright. Uh, I went on a long anime hiatus after watching so much shonen anime because, um, I don't know, I guess when you binge watch um, what amounts to, you know, several thousand episodes of, you know, anime and it's all the same genre, you kind of get tired of it. Your dopaminergic system kind of adjusts to the anime, so it starts to um, become less and less enjoyable and you stop you know, seeing anime in this new light and you don't, you sort of lose that sort of, that sort of like childlike innocence in a way that's sort of where you don't really even sub subconsciously or consciously recognize all of the, the tropes and the cliches that are common to each genre. So because of that, uh, I, because I got bored of uh, showing an anime, I ended up taking a pretty long hiatus of around two to three years where I barely watched any anime except for One Piece every Sunday and oh yeah and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure which sort of took me out of that but other than that I'd also pretty much watched every single shonen anime out there that I knew of at the time and um, yeah that's why I didn't really watch much anime but lo and behold come this five month period where I binge shit ton of anime um, probably like a thousand hours worth of anime or 90 different shows um, I basically hadn't watched anime in a while and, um, you know, I was also getting pretty bored of YouTube. I was fairly bored of video games at this point and I was looking for that next hit of dopamine and I was also kind of burnt out from trying to be, from trying to be like an improver. So I, uh, decided to try and turn to, you know, anime one last time, give it one last shot, you know, and... Also, um, yeah, so I decided to give the anime Steins Gate a try because I had heard it was good from a lot of people. I knew from reading online stuff that it was uh, supposed to be a classic. 
So I decided to check it out and I think just the conditions surrounding my life basically made it the perfect storm because I fell deep, deep in love with Kurisu. <laughs> Excuse my shitty Japanese pronunciation. Um, oh my god. But I fell in love with my Yusei Kurisu. 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 Fuck my life. Um, and, you know, this is for many reasons, which I could probably talk about in another video about, you know, why waifus are superior or some shit, but that's for another time. Um, I fell in love with her and this is probably punctuated by the fact that, you know, I, you know, I had not fallen in love with an actual woman for a long, long time because of, you know, three years of isolation. And I honestly haven't seen that many women in the first place. So I think my brain was just itching for, you know, something to simp over maybe and you know just witnessing her kindness and everything and her cute behavior it really just made me become infatuated and i dare say fall in love with a bunch of lines on a fucking screen a bunch of pixels on my computer desktop screen and yeah it's and well i really enjoyed the series not just for the story but because i really liked the um pro the female lead so you know i wanted more of that um i was al already a pretty compulsive binger of anime from um you know from when i was in my shonen tar days where i would binge watch you know at least 10 episodes a day if i could on the weekend and um sometimes a few on the weekdays as well and because of that I went straight back to that sort of pattern of behavior and I basically just wanted to binge every single romantic anime out there and sort of relive that high I got from seeing um, my Yusei Kurisu be su such a good uh, tsundere and also, um, yeah, just fill the, the void in my heart from all the loneliness and the fact that I would never get to see any more Kurisu interactions because I pretty much finished all the Steingates related material so I uh, you know I just jumped from series to series I actually re-watched ReZero which I thought was okay at first but I you know some people call me a fucking you know hate on me for this but um I fell in love with fucking Amelia because not in my opinion she's a fucking goddess like uh you know zero two i know these are all like normie anime and people hate on me for this but they're honestly pretty great and i don't think something's bad just because a lot of people like it just as something isn't bad because it's obscure but um that's besides the point i went from series to series and the thing about these uh romance anime is is that you know or anime in general is that you know a lot of them like to incorporate different genres but it's specifically romance um romance harem edgy and slice of life are all incorporated into every single anime out there and they all take place in some sort of japanese high school setting like 90 95 percent of them so um yeah because of that when i was binging romance animes i was also in, in inadvertently watching harem anime and you know the only dif the only distinguishing factor between them is that um you know, some might vary in the ratio of harem to romance to edgy to slice of life. And um, yeah, but anyways, I just watch a bunch and eventually for whatever reason, you know, these are still kind of like semi degen, but you know, it's on the way there because, you know, this is something really an only a lonely guy in his twenties could actually appreciate. I'm pretty sure if you um, actually had any relationships relationship experience if i had actually had any i'd probably find this shit really cringe and insufferable but because i don't um i i ended up liking it a lot and you know in my mind all of these anime girls are you know platonic ideal abstractions of what women should be so i enjoyed the shit out of all these animes and eventually for whatever reason um one day this sort of i've sort of remembered that when I was in high school, there was this sort of kind of like stereotypical, stereotypical chubby otaku guy with round glasses in one of my science classes, and he had this wallpaper on his uh, laptop. Fuck, my throat hurts. Um, 
talking. Uh, and um, he, you know, it always sort of burned like an impression in my mind about, you know, just how cute those anime girls were. So uh, I basically tried to um, look up uh, who these anime girls were because I, I really wanted to watch the anime that they were from. And so I kept searching and searching and eventually I found the anime and this uh, I guess begins the next phase of my degen descent into quote unquote degeneracy, even though it's actually not that bad, which I'll get to maybe um, <clears throat> later in the video. But the anime was Kaon, and you know, I had never seen anything like this anime. All I knew was that I wanted to see what exactly you know an anime featuring these cute girls was about. I thought it was gonna be like another harem anime, but you know. To my surprise, it was actually completely, completely different from what I expected. And you know, it's not something that I thought that I would ever like, or at least the, I never thought I would like the idea of, you know, quote unquote, cute girls doing cute things, moe anime, but um, I'll drink some tea. But I actually ended up really enjoying it because given how lonely I am and how little social contact I have, the fact that I have no real life in IRL friends, um, you know, I found it really wholesome and refreshing. And it's just basically the fact that, you know, you got to witness um, four different um, really cute anime girls with a, holy shit, I'm losing my voice, with a really uh, close um, friendship um, and just doing really cute shit. and. I'd say that it really, really appealed to me um, in that way because it was just so wholesome and it's pretty much unlike anything I've ever witnessed in real life. Like I've pretty much never witnessed anything like that, you know, by anybody in real life. And um, I guess it's one of those things where it's one of those situations where anime actually, you know, transcends real life and is actually better than it. And you know, for this reason, I really, really enjoyed K-On, but I feel like K-On was my introduction to Moe anime, specifically anime that were entirely focused on or predominantly focused on Moe. Moe slice of life, I guess, is technically what it is. And after I saw it, I was hooked and I, you know, I wanted more, but I didn't really know where to look. So uh, I, I, want, I looked for recommendations on YouTube and I found this YouTube channel and this channel recommended me, uh, recommended, um, you know, a bunch of different series, which I didn't really check out, but I think what I was trying to get to is that it sort of brought me to my next peg on the D-Gen ladder. And that is, you know, Ero Manga Sensei, Ora Emo, and Domestic Kanojo. So let me just clarify this by saying that by no means am I saying that these are degenerate anime um well they are slightly degenerate but my point is that in the grand scheme of anime they're not that degenerate and in the grand scheme of existence they're really not that bad there's way worse shit out there all the fucking weird types of fucking porn and fucking only fans even fucking twitch 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 streamers um that shit is all way worse than whatever is contained in these animes. But basically, I watched them in this order. I watched Domestic Kanojo first because I was told it was a dumpster fire. But I actually really fucking enjoyed it because, I don't know, I just really liked the idea of um, the whole forbidden love thing. Specifically between the hot teacher and the student who is basically of age. Except the teacher. I mean... People, people who don't know what I'm talking about, know nothing about this anime, are probably gonna grab their pitchforks and, you know, automatically assume that the uh, the teacher was a fucking guy and, you know, the student was a fucking girl, but it's actually swapped, which doesn't make it right, but I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit better for guys as long as they're, you know, close to 18 versus, you know, females where it's still kind of like dodgy and questionable, but, um, well, yeah, but uh, anyways, yeah, so enjoy the shit out of Sandwich because it's just, you know, it's kind of funny. But, you know, I didn't really find anything wrong with it. Uh, and another aspect of this anime that I sort of enjoyed was just, you know, the whole, like, 
the stepsister thing, which in my opinion, I find nothing wrong with, but that's because I'm an only child and you know, I've never had any siblings. So obviously, you know, this is given that I'm enjoying this shit, you know, it's totally normal behavior, totally normal, healthy human behavior. Like obviously if I had a sibling who was a sister and I enjoyed this shit, it's probably pretty fucked up. But given that I'm an only child, this actually makes it completely and 100%, um, you know, normal and healthy. But, um, you know, obviously I'm not being fucking serious, although I kind of am actually, but, um, so yeah, there's that. And then I watched Aramanga Sensei next and, um, well, you know, this anime gets a bad rap for obvious reasons. Knowing what I know now about anime, you know, it's not that bad, but you know, given that I am still fairly normie and I was even more normie prior to watching this anime, you know, I was sort of ended up enjoying it in, a, in, a, in an ironic sense because, you know, part of me, the, the normal part of me that was controlled by my superego, according to Freud, um, well, it basically, you know, thought that this shit was completely fucking degenerate. But, you know, because I enjoy k and I slowly, k made me fall in love with Moe, basically. Um, this um, anime, although it's pretty, it's fairly degenerate, um, I personally don't think it was that bad. And also just the fact that it had a lot of, you know, as much as you can hate on, you know, Sagiri, uh, you know, she is pretty fucking Moe and um, it's pretty like cute in a wholesome way. Like some people will try and twist this and say it's some sort of perverse, you know, thing that I'm, my motivations are perverse, but it's really not the case. I just really found, you know, you know, it was comedic, it was cute, it was funny. And um, yeah, and God, this sounds fucking bad. But uh, trust me when I say it's really not. And also just the fact that, um, you know, obviously, I would be against this anime 100% it was if it was actually um you know legitimizing this sort of you know behavior but the thing is that this anime is actually just one giant shit post in my opinion if you pay attention god it's so fucking bright when you pay attention to the um to the the music the just the whole com- the comedy aspect of it the the funny facial expressions <laughs> And just fucking everything like it's honestly just a giant fucking shit post and i found myself wanting to defend it from all the people review bombing it giving it ones and twos and threes on my anime list because well just based on the animation the quality of the animation and the sound design alone it was at least a five if not a six i gave it a seven because you know as degenerate as it was i was sort of you know i just sort of found it funny you know how fucking bad it was i guess the normie part of me found it funny that way i was probably trying to resolve some sort of cognitive dissonance in my mind from having actually you know spent the time to watch all 12 episodes but you know i don't know anymore i think it's fine but anyways um the next one i watched after that was naturally ore emo um ore something something no suki coming emoto 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 uh, Dekina and it's fucking hell. I don't know. I don't know fucking Japanese. Don't, don't fucking judge me. Um, but yeah, I I watched this anime and it was basically the same as Arrow Manga, except it was had a more cohesive story, uh, and um, the characters were more likable in my opinion. Um, and it's just in my opinion they butchered the fucking ending, but otherwise it was fairly enjoyable. But I feel like those three anime together sort of marked my entry into my gradual descent into quote unquote degeneracy. And, you know, I know that it really isn't that bad. And, you know, this is basically some normal fag shit as far as the grand scheme of anime goes. But yeah, from a, you know, from a normal person's perspective, even harem animes, which are just self insert fantasies about attractive women who are two-dimensional fawning over you you know are already pretty irregular and pretty deviant so when you take into account the fact that you're throwing in you know potentially incest and uh, you also and it's a lot of these stories have to do with fucking uh you know 
people of fairly questionable age, then, you know, it gets pretty dodgy. And obviously, I, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I think that the vast majority of people who um, watch this shit, you know, a good part, a good portion of them are doing it ironically and just chuckling at the fact that it's so degenerate. But then you start to just enjoy watching degenerate shit because it's kind of like comedic in a way, just how degenerate you are as a person and or how deviant you are as a person. And also just, um, I don't know, maybe you're, you start to miss at, you start to misattribute, misattribute the, the, uh, the sort of positive emotions you get out of enjoying something ironically with the sort of, with the, with the, uh, the, the questionable anime itself. So you start to, you know, enjoy it in that way, or you just automatically like subconsciously start to laugh whenever you see degenerate shit. And I feel like that's pretty much the phase I'm at right now where I'm not full on degen, but I'm also far past the point of being quote unquote normal. I'm in sort of like otaku purgatory where I'm, I have one foot in the real world and one foot in fantasy land. And um, I feel like I'm slowly progressing towards or not slowly, but honestly, pretty quickly progressing towards just full on Dijin stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd say the anime that I guess the last one I'm gonna talk about is uh, the Monogatari series. I think this one is the one that sort of the straw that broke the camel's back and basically made me go um, full Dijin. And that's because, you know, unlike the other animes which I've mentioned before, it was actually a fairly insightful anime. Uh, and had a lot of interesting plot points, a lot of interesting characters, probably some of the most interesting characters in all of anime um, and character interactions and pretty, you know, meaningful subtext and cinematography and everything like that. But at the same time, all of this effort is also put into the fan service in the anime. And there's also a lot of quote unquote problematic characters in this anime, which I'm saying problematic, not because I find them problematic, but because, you know, probably all the norm the normies on Twitter and um, your average Joe Schmo on his fucking desk job, your average boomer probably would find the shit that goes on in anime like just straight up, you know, criminal. And it's really not that bad in my opinion. Um, but not in my opinion. I have a pretty good argument for why it isn't bad, but. Yeah, anyways, um, it's specifically um, season uh, season two, the release order season two, um, episode eight, Nisa Monogatari. Um, that is the straw that broke the camel's back and basically made me um, take the degen pill. I'm actually losing my fucking voice, so I'm becoming less in... <coughs> oh, fuck my life. Becoming less and less. Um, it's becoming harder and harder for me to... Um, enunciate because I actually reshot this video several times because I kept stumbling and because there's really no way to make this video short so I pretty much given up on that by this take I'm just gonna talk and talk until I'm done but um yeah took the degen pill um just that one scene well actually the entire episode but just that one scene um you know basically turned me into a fucking ciscon which is perfectly normal behavior because I'm an only child and, you know, this is completely healthy and normal. But anyways, um, yeah, um, after that, you know, I watched, I think that pretty much cements my descent into the anime rabbit hole. And I'm not all the way down yet. There's still a long way for me to go. The most recent one is me falling down the VTuber rabbit hole. But in my opinion, that's not even that degenerate. I say, I'm not gonna say degenerate even, I'd say my behavior is deviant and not degenerate. And I like to make that distinction because um, in my opinion, uh, deviance merely refers to the fact that a behavior might be, you know, unusual, um, you know, outside of the norm, you know, probably only represented in a very, very small percentage of the population. But is it morally reprehensible? No. Um, degeneracy, on the other hand, is um, it's just deviance. Well, it doesn't even have to be deviant. I think it just means um, morally reprehensible, but in a way that is addictive and 
that hopefully is a is um what's it called is a deviant behavior as well but this is actually not the case when things like gambling uh only fans pornography there's actually way more degenerates who do that shit and in my opinion all that stuff is far worse than quote unquote problematic anime so i think when i was calling myself a degenerate the entire time i think what i meant to um call myself was a quote-unquote deviant um i really don't think there's actually anything morally reprehensible with what i'm doing and um the people who say that you know it's uh well that's a that's a topic for another video if i have to you know defend anime then i will and i'm talking about all anime not just not just uh you know the mainstream stuff but i mean like the entire art form i will defend it because um I think I have changed my mind a lot as far as that's oh my god I'm losing my voice but um yeah that's pretty much my entire degen um journey in a nutshell TLDR version um well, not even TLDR I fucking ranted for over 26 minutes but <clears throat> also one thing I want to mention is that I don't want the takeaway to this video takeaway of this video to be that you know watching anime turned me into a deviant or into a degen or it turned me into a a um a hikikomori or a, a neat or made me anti-social i think it's the addictive behavior itself that made me anti-social not anti-social um asocial or um you know all that stuff and i yeah as far as um turning me into a hikikomori making me nihilistic and stuff like that i know some people have commented that stuff but um i don't think anime is inherently nihilistic i think in fact a lot of anime actually criticizes nihilism but um it's just that you know my sort of change in demeanor is completely independent of anime also i was a hickey neat long before i went on this anime binge and prior to that the only animes that I watched were fucking shonen anime, which is the complete opposite of the hikini lifestyle. So, um, you know, I don't think those arguments that anime turned me into what I am now hold any water. You know, obviously, there's the argument that if anime never existed, then perhaps I would be normal. But, you know, perhaps I would turn to even worse addictions like, you know, simping for fucking you know lazy twitch thoughts and donating fucking super chats and spending my parents money on fucking super chats that's that's far worse than um you know than buying anime merch because at least people who make anime merch are actually putting an effort in creating a product most you know twitch thoughts are just you know selling their body they're basically just soft core softcore uh prostitutes for lack of a better word and i think that's far more predatory uh, because they're obviously string a lot of thirsty simps along and you know pretend to um, um you know pretend to care about them so they'll get donation money uh and also just the fact that some of these streamers have to go through you know also ter terrible amounts of you know social and public pressure and abuse so if you ask me which is worse um anime or fucking twitch streamers i'd say twitch streamers are way fucking worse for society as a whole in general um and most anime watchers really don't harm anybody we're just you know self-contained so contained in our own little bubbles of uh you know hickey neat um, or um social isolation we don't hurt anybody except ourselves basically so yeah um i think that's probably i could talk on and on about that maybe for another video as well but i kind of ranted about it anyway <clears throat> holy shit my loose my voice is almost fucking gone now but um yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say as far as my journey goes um some other um i'm gonna leave my my anime list in the in the description down below if anyone wants to check it out um you know there's a few things on there that are kind of questionable but just keep in mind that this is all completely um and utterly ironic me watching this shit and um 
it's really, um, I'm not being sarcastic when I say this, I'm actually being serious, even though my flat affect might not convey that, but that's just because I'm really tired right now. And also my voice um, is shot from having re-recorded this over and over again, because it's just such a long topic. Uh, I think I condensed it down pretty well. I think the first time I shot this, it was like an hour long, but um, yeah, managed to actually condense it down to 30 minutes this time, which is pretty good. And um, yeah, I'll leave it down below, um, but I'll just name a few um, fucking kiss sis. <laughs> it's pretty fucking hilarious in my opinion, but just like, I mean, if you, if you guys want to get an idea of like, sort of like guilty pleasure, like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's so fucking bad, but you just can't stop and wa you can't stop watching, but it's just, I don't know. It's so degenerate that it ends up becoming, you know, ascended and actually based. I feel like Kiss This is a pretty good example of this. Um, pretty much all of the series that I mentioned before are also a good example of this. But you will find that my anime list is honestly mostly pretty, pretty normal. If you guys have any recommendations for DGen stuff that I should check out, please let me know in the comments section below. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I want to watch that I haven't got to yet. But I'll probably get back to that once I climb out of the VTuber rabbit hole, which is another topic in itself by now. But anyways, I'm probably ranting. Uh, this is Comfy Neat signing out and peace.